is a man of extremes. And speaking of extremes, probably the piece de resistance that we haven't shown that was drawing us all the way in from back there. Just stop right here and turn the camera right now and see, you gotta see the view that I'm looking at. Are you kidding me? To somebody's backyard in Indiana. Oh! We're in Crown Point, Indiana. Yep. So we're not in Chicagoland. Mm -hmm. We built this nine years ago. 2009 started it, finished 2010 okay, because, because that, it's a big that's, project. that's how big it is. <laughs> we didn't finish it in one season. No. I'm Greg Whitsock, the Pond Guy. This is my channel, Greg Whitsock, the Pond Guy, which is all about living the aquascape lifestyle. This is Ed Ballou, aquascape's chief sustainability and director of field research. And this was oh, yeah. pushing it. This pushed it this, on this. all levels. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are in for a real treat. This is probably, no, I'm gonna say, this is definitely the most incredible backyard residential water feature we have ever put in. 100%. Check it out, the most incredible water feature. Hello! Hey! Hey, John. Hey, Greg. Good to see you. 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 Listen to that sound and look at wow. it. This is somebody's backyard. <laughs> this is unbelievable down here. How many actual aqua blocks did you put in? What is the system There's here? There's a thousand aqua blocks under here, 30,000 gallons of storage. And that's because this was traditionally gets a lot of rainwater coming in. It's actually a curtain drain that goes along the entire south edge of the property that captures some of the water from the neighboring properties and it reroutes it into here. Then this overflows and continues going towards Crown Point. It's part <laughs> of the stormwater management. It's part of the system, yeah. But we have another 20,000 gallons of storage there. So it's 50,000 okay. total. So this is the first thing you see when you walk into your backyard and it just keeps getting a more incredible from there <laughs> if that's even possible. <laughs> Thirty-one years you've been living here. For the last nine years or so, you've had this. I mean, this this is quite a vision, my man. It's a vision I had, though. The, the only reason I was able to build it is they cut down 600 trees next door, so we could bring the heavy trucks in. We brought in 1,500 tons of 1500 rocks tons from of the stone. Ozarks. Yes. All doesn't right. even count the stone to line the beds and all that. There's yep. no way we could have done this because we're landlocked. Here. Yeah. Now you're yeah. landlocked again. Yeah. You yeah. built the house, right? Yeah. right? This man actually went down and tagged his own rocks from steel to rocks. That's right. So if we're in Indiana, this is a career steel guy, but he created this masterpiece in his home. And one of the big inspirations was your family, was it yeah, not? Absolutely. Because yeah. your whole family was your yeah. kids, grandkids. Well, it's a stressful job. When you come home from the steel business, you want to relax. You know? <laughs> yeah. This is the place to relax. This is oh. unbelievably spectacular. And that's one of the reasons I built what we call a rock house. It's a, like a tree house. That's my outdoor man cave. Well, I have one inside, but there's not my outdoor man cave. That looks like a nice place to smoke cigars right up yeah, there. So So since the last time we were here three or four years ago, he's turned it into a fairy garden. Why not something new? The wood sculptor took one of my statues, the urns that we got from Aquascape. Yeah. As a statue looked like our daughter that we lost. And we said, make my Aww. daughter. It's a fairy castle. You see all the- Very special. This Gosh. is such a magical yard. And with yes. the grandkids, we wanted to build a fairy experience into yeah. it. Well, yeah, they call it what, Narnia? Magic. Narnia, yeah. I mean, this yeah. is a <laughs> perfect description. This is Narnia. You would never believe that we were in Indiana. Stone's throw from Chicago, just outside of all the hustle and bustle yeah. of everything, yeah. and you have this little hidden escape. How big is your property? Because it's, it's long three, and narrow. It's three acres, yeah. Ed, with the design, you guys really spread this out. I mean, I'm standing exactly. here right now, and I am looking probably 100 yards plus away, and I'm seeing the big main waterfalls. Yes, exactly. But it's well, so cool because it just draws you in because it's hidden. Mm -hmm. So this this is the part of the thing we were talking about, is you have this winding path. There's not a human being on Earth that could stop right here and not get drawn back there. <laughs> <laughs> Is 
it's just a cornucopia of things yeah. to look at, and there's always these little spaces, like this little space right here. Yeah. Yep. So you see the lights here? At nighttime, you think you're inside of a restaurant because oh you've got God. the canopy of the leaves that the light shines up on. Yep. This is pretty, like the place to read a book. Yeah, yeah. If I've ever do. seen a place to read a book, it's right here. Yeah, that's what we do. This was done since we left here, this yeah, whole fairy garden. Wow, look at this garden. I mean, it's. I love the two chairs here, too. <laughs> See you guys next week. <laughs> so there's a fogger right here. There's a fogger up there. So I'm looking at these foggers, which is perfect for a fairy garden. And then you turn your head right over here, and that is your waterfalls. Oh my gosh. Okay, I got to ask this question. What do people that come to your yard for the first time? They don't believe it. <laughs> We're not in Indiana. <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't stop. No, yeah. your eyes are I mean, I need the whole day it's just to good. take half of it in. Right Oh, another little area. <laughs> oh, another little seating area. Oh my gosh, look at how this is growing in the wetland. Look at how we, big it is. We have one in ours and it, it's uh, not doing anything. We're sitting on top of the wetland filtration system that's responsible for the water quality of this entire feature. So the main waterfall doesn't run all the time. The wetland never goes off. Right. Yeah, he flips on the waterfalls whenever he's got a party exactly. or exactly. people exactly. over, and then it goes off, and then this one runs 24-7. Yeah, I mean, this is awesome. I love all these grasses and oh stuff growing God. inside. And that's part of the filter. It's all part of the filter, as well as this tree. So this thing is is growing down inside of the filtration system. Sort of it's just constantly fed nutrients. Correct. Awesome. Beautiful tree, isn't it? And so this, this is a beautiful area. This is why you have a little spot. seat right here. Another cocktail. There's another another cocktail area. Fairy <laughs> <laughs> garden. So Ed, when you came in, it looked not too much different no. than this. So all the trees were recently cut down and this was the staging area for all of our stone, but basically it was flat. They actually created a little contour, but this is the same exact size lot as what we're in here. And what's interesting is look how much bigger this one feels because of That's all those so little true. hidden you rooms. Can't see, Cause you can't see around. So this is a three acre lot next door, yep. same size lot, John yep. Nancy's. And yet this one looks a fraction of the size of this one cause it creates mystery over here. So this is the perfect little man cave if I've ever seen one. Big man yeah, cave. Now you see this sign here, it's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> Our beer is 23 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is great. As we're walking in, he's telling us the story. You tell the story of this place. Oh, well, he first told me that he was having a gazebo. And then one day I came out and I said, we've got a big cement slab. Well, what are you doing with a gazebo? Well, he still called We've it been married 53 years. This is the first time I ever lied to my wife. <laughs> this is such a oh, neat space. Gosh. To the sky pavilion of the man cave. Hey, you right. see this tree here? Bending the railing. Everybody wants me to cut the tree down. Oh. All the way in hell. Yeah, no. That <laughs> makes us like a tree out of it. Absolutely. Wow, look at I this. agree with that. Have I said it before? This is somebody's backyard. We haven't even seen the stream that goes on the other side. We're on another... This house is actually on an island, completely yeah. surrounded by water. See, there's the other stream. <laughs> can't buy a house on water, you just make the water around the house. <laughs> I have enough memories to write a book about this project. I mean, just because of the sheer magnitude of it, John actually had to talk to the power company. They had to bring an entire special feed. We have three phase power here, just so we could power the pumps for this massive feature. Once our excavation was done, we had the challenge of setting all the stone. We had a 40,000 pound excavator sitting on top of our aqua blocks. I have rocks, many tons of rocks sitting on top of the aqua blocks, and then I got a 40,000 pound excavator sitting on top of that. So the pressure of all that stuff was pushing the limits of this system. And we're reaching across 
We got fences. We have big mature trees. For us to do this stuff, we had one spot. We had one access point. And you're reaching that machine out to its farthest extent, setting multiple ton boulders. So I was sweating it a little bit. I knew it was all gonna hold up, but man, it sure made me think twice about all my decisions. So that's just one of the challenges that we have with this little feature, as well as putting that big puzzle piece together um, as we continue to work from here up to the top. So let's take a walk up top to our next stop. The other thing that we did here was we knew that there was gonna be some sort of a seating area here. Didn't know it was gonna turn into this massive man cave, uh, but we knew there was gonna be a little seating area over here. And we wanted to bring fish from the main pond into this area. So this section of stream here is what we would call a deep stream. The koi will come all the way up into the stream. Now koi are a riverine fish, normally found in the rivers of China. That's where they originated from. So for us to create this environment where we have eight to 12 to actually 16 inches of water. The koi love coming in here because they like to feed in that. You'll see them just kind of lazily swimming back and forth in those currents. They could basically graze on the bottom as food comes to them. But what I like about that is it brings the fish right up next to the main viewing area. So you have views from the top, from inside. You could see fish and all this stuff kind of converges. And then the other important part of this is all of that water is blasting back into the pond right at that opening. You can see those koi feeding right in front of that rock. Now, again, as a fisherman, that's a spot that I would go for. I mean, these are the things that you naturally think about, but whenever I'm designing, I'm using all that stuff, all of that knowledge from years of fishing, hiking, going out in the woods and understanding fish biology, what the fish are gonna look for. Here's more and more fish. They're all converging right in that one spot. Schools of the koi are coming in. You got a little bit of a, a dappled sunlight coming in, but the koi are just focused there because it's bringing in that flush of food that's washing down from the screen. We choked all of that water. That, all that so, pump. So thick. It's just thick. I mean, look at I mean, this looks like a trout stream. And then you have that big turn. I love creating those peninsulas. Yep. I mean, just look at the current in there. <laughs> Vegetation kind of creeping over It's the unreal. Sides. It's so cool. I said it oh, once. I've said it a hundred times. I cannot believe this is somebody's backyard and he built it. And Ed, <laughs> this is a million dollar backyard. Oh, yeah. It's a million dollar backyard. <laughs> but, but, but think about this. How much do people pay for land yeah. that's on something like this? I mean, you could... Many, many millions. And their taxes would be insane. He designed a <laughs> waterfalls that his house looks over. If well, you go to Montana, you wouldn't be able to find that. You would not. That's a million dollar view. That to me is what this job is all about seeing people that are able to live their lifestyle because they choose to live the aquascape lifestyle. But and not everybody needs a million bucks though either. So you could right. have that same, for $10,000 you could do something. John, yes, very, very extreme, but this could be done anywhere on any budget and it would make a massive impact. This has been an absolute pleasure being here again. So Nancy, I wanna ask you a little bit because John was telling me how, um, I asked him how he's doing in retirement. He goes, listen, I would never bring my work home. I would need an escape in my yard. And this is basically what this has become for him, yes. correct? Mm -hmm. And he's always done it. Uh, other places, we lived in New Jersey. That was our first house. Yeah. And he did a lot of landscaping there. It's therapy. And, mm -hmm. So the work that yes. you do back here is, is therapy. Yeah. I mean, this is because I would think if you're a high powered executive that's worked your entire mm -hmm. life and you retire, it's a big change. But you've always been a guy that's enjoyed mm -hmm. your home as a sanctuary. Yeah, now this is a fun change because I get to keep doing but I really like to do the best, and I have my grandkids that I spend time with. And that's why you don't have a second yeah. vacation home, because your grandkids yeah. are in the area. So your right. vacation home is yeah. your home. And yes. my oldest grandson, like I told you earlier, helped me pick out all the trees and all the rocks that you see. So here he's part the, of this. Ozarks and Portland. <laughs> His fingertips are, are part of this. Yes. Exactly. And he's gone kayaking on this, hasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many grandkids could say they go to grandma and grandpa's and go kayaking yeah. in their backyard? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's just amazing. This is our art. Yeah. So basically, for you gave us a palette to work with that is is second to none and so yeah. this to date ed would you agree with this this is our most extensive 
and favorite residential backyard Without makeover. A Without a doubt, absolutely. So for that, I thank yeah. you, sir. Absolutely. And thank yeah. you for the hospitality. This well, is what this Ed, is. Ed was the Monet of. Uh, yeah, he uh, is. Uh, and I taught him everything he knows. Yeah, exactly. And he still knows nothing. <laughs> See why, see why I like this guy? This, this is good. Hey, if you want to follow along and see cool people with phenomenal backyards, with incredible designers like Ed Blue, like, comment, and subscribe to this channel because more people need to know what living the Aquascape lifestyle is all about. Life is good. Life is good. And I love my job. <laughs>